Over the last few weeks, we've been getting loads and loads of questions about fishing in deep water. Because of social distancing and since we were allowed to go back out fishing since the UK lockdown, lots of people have been venturing onto natural reservoirs and lots of them are very deep. So this video is all about some of the top tips that we put into play to help us catch more fish in deep water. Well, it's quite often that when we are faced with deep water swims, the maximum depth that we're going to be fishing in isn't really close in. So that can often suggest that there will be some sort of a shelf or drop off. If that's the case, you really need to know where they are because the last thing you want to be doing is hooking fish, even whether they're big fish or small fish, for you to be losing them on any sort of a snag or rock face in some cases as you're reeling back in. So the first thing you need to do is just clip a bomb on and what we do is with a stopwatch just work our way out with a bomb and just get a good idea of where any drop offs are and just get an idea of how deep the peg is. Once you know where those shelves are, it's a case of keeping a mental note of where they are and that way you should be able to select a range to fish that's hopefully gonna mean that you're not gonna lose any fish. Once you've decided where you're going to fish, you obviously then need to be able to select a feeder that's going to get you to that spot. Conditions depending, that might determine what kind of feeder you can actually use. Now in most scenarios, I would love to use just a plastic solid feeder like this one, which just protects the ground bait from the water. It just means that if it's going to take 10, 15, 20 seconds for that feeder to hit the bottom, you inevitably want to try and make sure that that feeder is still holding the ground bait in it once it reaches the bottom. So if you can use a plastic type feeder like that, that's perfect. Now if conditions don't allow you to use a feeder like that, you might need to switch to an Horizon style feeder. Now this is the type of feeder that can cut through the wind if you've got a strong crosswind or a headwind. This kind of feeder will allow you to get to that range. However, the downside to a feeder like this in deep water is that because it's such fine wire mesh, the water is able to get to the ground bait really quickly and easily and that means that there's every chance that when this feeder hits the bottom in deep water it could be empty the ground bait could have easily come out on the way down now one way of getting around that is to use a cage coat now these are cage coats and as the name suggests they are coats that are designed to go around your cage feeder so all you do is open one of the coats and that simply goes around your feeder like so and then what you need to do is just hold that over the nozzle of a kettle so that when it's boiling the water, the steam that's coming out of the nozzle, if you hold that over the steam, that will actually shrink that coat around the feeder. So that means you're then left with an horizon feeder like that with this coat that shrunk around it, which means that the cage coat will be protecting the ground bait from the water as it falls through the water. So you're getting a feeder that's going to hit, make sure you're hitting that range and it'll just try and ensure that the ground bait is still in the feeder when it hits the bottom. And then a step up from that, if conditions allow, you could also use an even more encapsulated or enclosed feeder like a dome feeder, which really protects everything. There's only one outlet there where the water can get to that ground bait and that'll just try and ensure that your ground bait is still going to be in the feeder when it hits the bottom. Now when we're feeder fishing, if you're fishing to a clip, depending on the depth, you could be bringing your feeder back towards you quite a long distance. Now, we know about the arc, as the feeder falls through the water, it's falling in an arc back towards you as an angler, and that just means that the deeper the water that you're fishing in, the bigger that that arc is. Now some people try and combat that by hitting their clip behind them, so when you cast the feeder out, you can hit the clip here, and as soon as the feeder hits the surface of the water, as it's falling down, they actually move their rod forward. So what they're actually doing is, they're encouraging the feeder to fall straight down as they move their rod towards the actual feeder itself. And that can be a great way of just trying to make sure that your feeder's falling straight down, so that any feed that is gonna come out of the feeder is more likely to be landing around the feeder once it settles on the bottom. However, what I prefer to do is, I like to hit the clip as normal, I actually want the feeder to come back towards me in that arc, and by doing so, it obviously means that you're fishing nice and tidy to a clip, but there are certain times during the session when you might want to not squeeze the ground bait into your feeder quite as tight, so that some ground bait and some bits of particle feed actually come out of the feeder down and they will inevitably fall vertically. Now what that can actually do is create a nice little quiet area of free food just there, just behind your main feed area. So whilst you're fishing away, if you're catching here on your hot spot, 
and everything's fine you keep getting bites and catching happy days keep doing what you're doing however if it does go quiet and you think the fish may have backed off or you just want to see if there are any fish behind your feed well all you can do then is just take your line clip off and just go past by one two three four meters just so that the next time you cast out the feeder is going to hit your clip about there because you've unclipped and gone past but then when it lands it's going to be landing right in this hot spot here and that can be a great way of picking off extra fish during the session and it can be something that can really nick you off some better fish if they tend to be just hanging back behind the feed Feeding can be very, very important in deep water. And as you can imagine, most of the time, we all know now that fish really don't live on the bottom. In very deep water, the fish might be at half depth. And if you're fishing in somewhere that's 25, 30 feet of water, then those fish, even though they're only at half depth, they could be 15 feet off the bottom. And that's obviously nowhere near your feeder. So one of the key things that we've learned over the years is that we can try and coax fish down onto the bottom. And a lot of people refer to that term as feast and famine. In. and one of the ways we can get around this is to quickly introduce three or four feederfuls of bait in quick succession just so that you've quickly got a volume of bait down on the bottom just to try and coax any fish that might be up in up in the water to just come down and have a look and hopefully mop up the feed that you've put there and by doing that at intervals during the session you often find that the fish because there's suddenly a volume of bait down on the bottom in one big hit that they will go down there for a minute two minutes three minutes and mop up all the, all the bait that's there before moving back up to the depth of water that they're most comfortable in and by doing that that just creates you a, a one or two or three minute window there where you have a chance of catching those fish whilst they're actually down there on the bottom. If fish are up in the water, one of the best things you can do is try and present your hook bait much nearer to them. If fish don't want to be down on the bottom, it's gonna be very, very difficult to get them down there. And unfortunately, just because we are feeder fishing, that's inevitably where your bait is gonna end up, down on the bottom. So one of the things that you can do to um, try and catch extra fish is to just put a longer hook length on if you've got a one meter hook length or a meter and a half hook length then when your feeder hits the bottom the hook length is a meter and a half up off the bottom before it starts slowing down and sinking under its own weight of the actual hook and the hook bait itself and by doing that you're just presenting your hook bait that little bit nearer and a little bit longer to the fish that are up off the bottom and that can be something that you can try at intervals during the session and it can be a great way of just picking off extra fish that don't want to go down onto that lake bed if you are going to be fishing a longer hook length one of the things that you can do is to try and use floating maggots one of the best ways of doing floating maggots is simply to add a fizzy drink like seven up or coke or pepsi into a bait box just a, a small amount put your maggots in there and over the course of a few minutes they will gradually float and that can be one of the things that can slow your bait down so that it's just making your bait a little bit more buoyant which means it's going to stay up off that bottom that little bit longer and another key thing with that is to try and use a lighter pattern hook or a lighter gauge hook to do that you know if you're trying to make your hook bait stay up in the air longer or stay up in the water longer with a more buoyant bait then it doesn't make sense to have a really heavy hook on so if you can get away with a slightly lighter and lower gauge um, hook then that's only going to help keep the bait up there that little bit longer all these little percentages can just result in extra fish And another final key detail is what I learnt on the reservoirs local to me where I live in South Yorkshire and that is that when we get down to those depths we know from people that have been scuba diving and diving down there and underwater filming that when you get down into deep water one of the things that's inevitable is that the light levels will drop so it is darker down there now on lots of these reservoirs the water clarity is quite clear and that's why myself included a lot of the time we find ourselves much more confident using a dark colored ground bait or a black ground bait because we just think that fish generally feed better over those darker ground baits they feel much more confident and we catch more fish that way i'm a big believer in that however in deep water if the fish aren't down there on the bottom and don't really want to go down there the last thing i really want to be doing is fishing down there with a camouflaged bait when we're fishing in deep water we tend to find that we're trying to get the fish to go down okay so that's when brighter colored baits come into it just by having a selection of hook baits and brighter color baits where it's definitely definitely been better to fish with brighter to color baits down in that deep water so brighter baits like fluorescent pinkies or maggots can be fantastic they really stand out well corn 
sweet corn is fantastic it's a really visible bait it's brightly colored and fish that are up off the bottom are going to be able to see that much better if they do want to have a look down to see what's down on that lake bed so that can be something that's going to coax them down and that also spills over into my ground bait mixers so i tend to I mean I'm usually using fish meal mixers anyway because we tend to be targeting skimmers and bream and so I just use a lighter mix in deeper water because I just think it stands out much better on the bottom and it just gives the fish more of a target so if you're going to be selecting lighter coloured mixers these sorts of mixers are ideal you know they're not the dark green mixers they're not the black mixers that we use on a lot of venues but these lighter coloured mixers just stand out much better on the bottom. I really hope these tips help you catch more fish and if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe just there. So thanks for watching and I look forward to seeing you on Monday for the next upload at 7pm.